from Gibson Hall, you are from Rio Bodas College. Um, do any of you remember this game from this year? I'm sure most of you do. I'm going to show you a quick highlight from it just to refresh your memory. I think that was generous enough. But it allows Georgia Tech now to set the offense. You want to get the ball to Tucker. Tucker will shoot. this game, how many thought that um, we could go far in the tournament this year? I mean, a lot of a lot of the campus felt that, actually. So, uh, how many were disappointed after we lost to Michigan State? Yep, I mean, everyone was disappointed. It was terrible. So today, my PowerPoint is going to be all about the shortcomings of Maryland basketball, um, especially in recent years, around the like, past eight years. Um, we won the national championship in 2002. And ever since then, we haven't been able to reach the level of what we used to be. Um, this is a chart I found on Washington Post, and it documents um, the national champions from 1992 to 2002, which is when Maryland won. And if you were to study it really closely, every other team that won was able to maintain um, continued success, um, except Maryland. You see, um, in the year after we won the national championship, the year after we made the Sweet 16, then we lost in the second round, and for two straight years we didn't make the tournament at all. We lost in the second round again and didn't make the tournament again. So, I mean, that's just, if we want to be an elite basketball program, that's just not right. Um, the problem with Maryland, as many people feel, is that we have a lot of recruiting problems, and this just means that Gary Williams, who's a coach of Maryland, he's been called really introverted, and he's not like a fatherly figure towards players and that throws people off and doesn't want um, really good high school basketball players to come here. And um, it's been widely documented on ESPN and Rivals.com, which is another big um, college basketball site, that the Baltimore, Maryland, D.C., Virginia area is the best high school basketball area in the entire nation. And the fact that um, we haven't been able to get top prospects from those areas, um, it's really disheartening. Um, also, we don't recruit um, McDonald's High School All-American players, and basically this just means um, they take the top 30 players from the entire country and put them in a game, and they're just labeled as um, High School All-Americans, just the top players in the nation. Um, there's a, in the D.C. area, there's a league called the D.C. Assault Summer League. It's an AAU basketball league um, in the summer, and AAU is called the Amateur Athletic Union. and um, uh, the top talent from the entire country comes and plays in this league. And Maryland is not affiliated at all with um, recruiting from this AAU basketball league. But teams like um, North Carolina, Duke, Georgia Tech, um, basically all the rivals, they all get most of the players from this league. And we don't. Um, it's been said also in the past um, five or six years that um, AAU has been really influential in where a kid um, decides where to go to college. And this is even a quote from Gary Williams that um, proves this fact. Um, why Williams is against AAU? He believes it's not traditional and it takes away from like old school recruiting techniques. And basically that just means he feels recruiting should be done through the high school coach and the parent. And if he feels he gets to go to an AAU coach or another coach, he just doesn't even mess with it. And this is a quote from Curtis Malone, who's the founder of the DCSL. He said, if the situation looks at anything less than the high school coach, the kid and the parent, Gary doesn't even mess with it. It's so commonly known that he doesn't, that he doesn't look gay, you guys. And this is what's really been setting us back. Um, here's a couple examples of people from our area who um, could have come to Maryland but chose not to. Um, the first person is Rudy Gay. Um, he went to Eastern Technical High School in Baltimore, Maryland. I don't know if any of you know that high school, but um, his top two schools came out to Maryland and UConn. And the reason why he went to UConn is because um, Gary didn't recruit him at all. He actually wanted to come to Maryland, but Gary showed no interest in him. And he went on to win uh, a national championship at UConn, and he's now a really good player in the NBA in Memphis Grizzlies. Another player is Carmelo Anthony. He went to Towson Catholic High School in Maryland. And um, his top two schools were Syracuse and Maryland. And he chose Syracuse over Maryland for the same reason that Gary just wasn't, didn't seem too interested in him. And uh, he went on to become one of the best players in the NBA, and he still is. Next player is Kevin Durant, 
We went to Montrose Christian Academy in Rockville, Maryland, which is also the same high school as Grievous Vasquez. Um, he chose Texas over Maryland, and basically for many of the same reasons as the other players did. And um, this is really handed us, and he turned out to be one of the best freshman players in college basketball history. And he's still, he's a really good player in the NBA as well. Um, our 2010 recruiting class doesn't look too promising. Um, two of the top 10 rated high school basketball players in the entire nation are from Baltimore, Maryland, and neither have considered coming to College Park. Um, the first one is Josh Shelby, he went to Lake Clifton High School in Baltimore, Maryland. And right now he's undecided, but he's not considering Maryland as his top schools. His top two schools are like Kansas and Kentucky. And the next player is Will Barton. He went to Brewster Academy in Baltimore, Maryland, and right now he's a number six prospect in the USA. And he's going to Memphis, and he didn't consider Maryland at all either. So basically, until we start dipping into this AAU talent, um, we're never going to reach the levels that we were in 2002.